28 past the hour. It's been a little more than a month since a gunman tried to assassinate former President Trump at a Pennsylvania rally. And for many of Trump's supporters, that attack may have changed the way they see his candidacy and his potential second term in office. NBC News correspondent and co-anchor of NBC News Daily, Morgan Radford, has been talking to those supporters, many of them, uh, Morgan, evangelicals? Many of them evangelicals, Jose, and it was interesting because one thing that they explained was that this assassination attempt is still very much on top of mind for a lot of Trump supporters. In fact, you can sort of hear it in terms they use, like divine intervention. You can even see it in some of the T-shirts and the outfits they wear at these rallies. But what we also learned during this report, Jose, is that it's really reinforced a belief that existed well before the assassination attempt, that the former president has a role to play when it comes to religious policy right here on earth we will fight from the pulpit to the political to stage give thanks and glory to god for sparing the life of president donald trump there's a new type of language surrounding former president donald trump's campaign divine intervention and god has his hand on it Doubling down after the failed assassination attempt on July 13th at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, which Trump survived with only a minor ear injury. Trump is still alive, by God's grace. A sentiment echoed in everything from fan-made merchandise like to music videos on social media. I heard it prophesied that you would shoot, but you would miss. Before the assassination attempt, white evangelical Protestant voters supported Trump at a rate of 81 percent. Now, could what many consider to be a miracle strengthen his popularity among Christians even more? To find out, we spoke to dozens of Trump supporters at religious events, churches, and campaign rallies across the country who talked about everything from their goals for a second Trump term to their fears if he doesn't win. We uh, need to protect the, the babies. It's not logical for a man to pretend to be a woman and compete in any male sport. To their political opposition. I'm ready for them to make our friends the Bible are, are hate speech. speech. Yeah, you think people who vote on the left would make the Bible that, hate speech? Definitely. Allison Painter says she was on the Capitol grounds on January 6th. So you're talking to an insurrectionist. You were there. I was. Her belief, divine intervention played a role in saving Trump, and it can do the same for the nation as a whole. We need to have Christ back in our back in our country. What does that look like to have Christ back in our country? What does that look like politically? Just like Louisiana, put the Ten Commandments back in our classrooms. That's, we need that. Shane Winnings is a pastor and the CEO of Promise Keepers, a men's ministry group. He says there's a bigger message. My message to Christians, and it should be loud and clear now, is if you don't want to be in politics, that's fine, but politics wants to be involved in you. Do you think this particular, the second run of Trump, has re-energized the Christian right in a new or different way? A thousand percent. All following a seismic shift among Republican voters happening before the assassination attempt. While more than 40% of Republicans believed Trump was anointed by God in a 2020 survey, that number dropped to just 18% three years later. One of the reasons why we see Trump and many others in his orbit using religious language and specifically going um, to talk to Christians and Christian audiences uh, is to try to reinforce those connections. Connections that are now resonating with some Trump supporters, like Joseph Patterson. It was a miracle. So if, if Trump has been divinely protected, mm -hmm. does that mean that he has to listen to Congress or listen to man-made entities? Yes, free will. He can listen to himself. You know? Even right. if it's against maybe, you yes. know, the will of the American people or the Supreme Court or yes. Democrats. So whatever for President Trump says goes, is that kind of what I'm hearing? Yeah. We reached out to the Trump campaign for comment. They have not responded yet. But to put all of this in context, nearly 63% of Americans consider themselves to be Christian, according to the most recent polling from Pew Research. But it's important to note not all Christians are evangelicals. In fact, evangelicals are around 24% of the population, a number that's declined by 6% since 2007. But still, this is a group that has gotten much more reliably Republican in the last 40 years, which means he'll say that their turnout will be key for the Trump campaign in November. Morgan Radford, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you.